gotta get. Two weeks away now. Um, what half half the roster? Most of the roster's been announced. Um, how you feeling about the team? You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys some some real deal like vulnerability stuff. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, so I've known the team for about a month. The full team, right? The full team's been picked for well over a month. I've been I, I've been getting uh, bombarded with. Um, disappointment in my selections like genuine disappointment on some selection stuff and I understand it everyone that's the beauty of this game everybody has an opinion right that's the wonderful part of it is that we can all have opinions that's the wonderful nation I hope to live in where everybody's allowed an opinion and then you respect the other person's opinion also so um you know it's been very interesting the process to select the team was very complex as you guys can imagine with all the COVID precautions state by state who can travel, who can't travel, what the quarantine rules are and aren't. So it's been pretty complicated, but I'm very, very pleased with the team that I picked. I think that every single player that I've selected um, is in good physical condition, can travel, has been an all-star player in the league either for two, three, four, five, six years, has won championships, has won individual awards in the last year. So I'm pretty confident in my team. I think, I, I think that uh, Leo did a fantastic job picking his team. Uh, given the circumstances and how difficult it is this year uh, with the last game being played nine months ago. Yeah. Um, but I'm really pleased with the process. So Dave wants to know um, how many, other than the people who are actually selected, how many were, how many either turned it down or weren't able to do it? You know what? That's actually a very good question. And out of respect for the players who did turn it down, I don't think it's fair not only the players who did turn it down, but those who did accept, I don't think that's a fair question to answer. The, put it like this. There were at least 10 players that were talked to in this, on my side of the country that um, for one reason or another could not make it. Now that's not to say they were higher or lower on the list than the ones who did make it, but I, but the pool of players I opened the discussions up to was significantly bigger, but um I think that's all he's asking. He, he doesn't want names or anything. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of players that could have made this list. I mean, that's the beauty of this game that, that we were talking about on, on the show the other day is how good this league is and how diverse this group could have been. I mean, I think that if you go just on the West, because like, like I said, I, I'm focusing on my side, um, you know, of the 16, 17 guys that are going to be representing uh, our team, we probably could have picked 10 or 12 other guys without it. And probably nobody would have even batted an eyebrow. It, you know, it would have just been like, yeah. Um, so there's some serious quality around the league. And I think that it's a testament to how good the players are that we can pick these teams and have these discussions. How is this guy not in? How is that guy not in? So yeah. I think it, it's a, it speaks well of the league. Oh, but The beauty of this game is that, that you know, um, you know, we, we play a statistic sport. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of American Sports are statistic sports. Those of us that play the game know that statistics don't tell the whole story, mm -hmm. right? If you really are in the game yeah. and you've played for a long time, you know that there's more to it. You can have a player who gets no numbers, no contributions on a piece of paper, but everyone knows is an absolutely different level player. And you can have vice versa. You can have players that put up a lot of statistics and they, they have either been a specialist at one thing so the statistics don't tell the whole story, but generally speaking, over the course of a season, statistics tell you a story. Um, if you are in the honorable mention, first team, second team, third team, it's because you've done something, something somewhere. Nobody just decided over the night on a whim, you know what, I think we're bored. So why don't we just give this guy a second team? That's not how that works, you know? Yeah. So um, generally speaking, these players have earned it in some right. Um, and the fact that you can have, you know, on the East Coast, Vinny Dantas be honorable mention with 52 points is, is you know, wow. Right, you know, right. To the league, honestly. If a player, if a player that good with those numbers uh, in that division uh, is only honorable mention, then then I think that you can safely look at the league list and say, okay, there's some players here. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, I mean, one of the things that I, I brought up last week when we had, uh, we had um, Nick Vassos, Eric Bergrud, and uh, Brian Bozinski on, we, we, I, I, I kind of pled with the, you know, the, the people watching saying, Hey, um, this is not going to be 
hundred percent ideal all-star game. It's 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 the best that we can do in the situation we have. It's not going to be your absolute number one player that's going to show up that you want to have because maybe he's caught in another country. Maybe he is sick. Maybe he has family members. Who number of, of, of issues. And I, I want people to not look at this as, oh, the league is screwing this up again because it's not the exact perfect way I'd like to do it. Well, yeah. having said that, I think that even if you look at the list we have, even if everybody was healthy, I would say that a good 80% or plus is pretty spot on to where we are anyway. Yep. So it's not, it, it's not like we're, okay, listen, this team is completely nothing like what we would have picked on a normal year. It's, I would say it's pretty accurately depicted. Now, I, I will tell you, and obviously Leo's coming on now and he can tell you his challenges, um, you know, organization to organization, there are different parameters. So uh, in Tacoma, my owner obviously is very open to allowing players to go. Um, some organizations were not as immediately mm. open to allowing their players to go um, really- for any reasons. And that's not to in any way say that they're bad reasons. It's just that some organizations have something going on that week. They don't want to, their players to take part in or or they have travel, or they're worried of what could happen if a player got caught in Missouri. So, you know, there's all kinds of things um, to consider. But given the, given those parameters, the, the, the teams that have selected are 80 to 85% accurate to what we probably would have picked on a normal, everyday, run-of-the-day run uh, team anyway. Right. So, so, so do you think... Gio, hold on. Gio had a question, and you guys interrupted oh. him. I saw him. I knew you wanted to ask something. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, I'm just what? no, Nick, having this being the first MASL All-Star, how do you feel not only participating, but actually being like one of those people spearheading it? How do you feel personally? I know we talk about the team a lot, but want to hear what you feel. Yeah, so uh, so it's it's an interesting one uh, on a couple. Sorry, my dog's jumping in here. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, so it's an interesting one because on one side, it's extremely humbling to be involved at this level right, to be able to be involved and do things um, that are player driven. You know, a lot of events uh, for those of us that have played in this league for a while uh, have not been player driven. They've been organization driven. They've been fan driven. They've been financially driven. This one is player driven. We've tried to find a way to ensure that the players are not only financially taken care of, they're going to have opportunities to to make their own, um, make some finances as, as this with this that they're also going to have everything, you know, security health wise to the T to the top. So we've been trying to make this an experience and Leo can, can add his own two cents on this. That's really player driven. We want the players to want to play in the game. We want the players to have this be a thing. So that part has been super humbling. I will tell you, it's a tremendous amount of work um, and not just for Leo and I, but the people that are doing the day to day grind back in the offices in KC, back in the offices in Tacoma, uh, you know, Brian Budzinski and and, uh, and Lane Smith that are putting a lot of this together and, and, and working tirelessly to get this thing going. So that part is draining. But then just the playing side, is, it's going to be like this emo- massive emotional release, you know, that we if we can get this thing off the ground and we're going to play and just to be able to play with guys that, you know, Leo has to go battle Ian Bennett <laughs> the last 15 years every single day. You know, I think that Leo's going to enjoy being able to run around with Ian the same way that I'm going to enjoy running around with certain players on my side of the conference that, it, you know, when you see them on the field, it's usually like, you know, you got your, you got your knife between your teeth and you're ready to go for it. Um, and you get to like hang out with that guy. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm really excited. East versus the West. I have, I have not seen a, a an all-star game in my time as being an indoor soccer fan. So this is, this is exciting for me. I agree. That's why I was excited about it because, you know, um, this is something that I've always dreamed of and hoped for. And, and I've seen other leagues around the U S and everywhere else having such event. Um, I was really excited and I felt uh, privileged and honored to, to get invited to be a part of it. So yeah, just like you and, most players and fans, I think is going to be incredible. Well, you know, what's funny is uh, since I've been involved in this game, there's been this longstanding conversation of East versus West, right? And and for a while there, it was MISL versus PASL. And I started in the PASL, went to the MISL, and then MASL when we all joined. And even then, there was still the dialogue of, you know, is the East more competitive? Is the West more competitive? Where are the best players? Where are the best teams? Where are the best fans? 
And it's just been this constant dialogue. And I think that honestly, the dialogue is fantastic for our sport. The more we talk about it, the better it becomes for everybody. The more relevant we are, the more we are. So that's all fantastic. But I think it's great to have an event like this where we get to actually go have the guys that are the ones either talking about it or thinking about it, go kind of show it, you know? Um, I used to have a longstanding joke with Craig when he was playing for the Sockers and I was in Milwaukee because uh, the Sockers had like a 57 game unbeaten streak in the PSL at that time. I don't know how many games it was. And of course in the MISL, that doesn't exist, right? Nobody no. ever 57 games. <laughs> I remember saying, you know, you guys might crush that league, but you're going to come out here and get dropped. And he was like, I don't know, we could see. And, you know, we never got to actually get that conversation going. Right. And obviously it's not going to be that right now, but I think that, that there's some conversations that have been going for a long time. Um, and, and I think obviously as Leo will attest to, you know, the, the rivalries on that East side are, are, are bitter. I mean, Missouri and, and, and Kansas city and, uh, and, and, Louis. Louis yep. and all that whole crew right there. I mean, you guys are in it it's the same as Ontario, San Diego and Tacoma. I mean, the three of us are always battling for those three spots for those two spots. Sorry. And we're, and it's usually pretty lethal though, that, that, that combination. So to be able to unite forces and kind of under one banner, go for it and have fun. And then after the game's over, go back to hating each other. I think that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it that way, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hating each other in sporting terms. You know, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree yeah. with Nick. Um, I, I think for me, I started getting that feeling when, when I started making the calls. And I'm sure Nick can attest to it too. When I call Ian, I mean, with no hesitation, he was just like, Leo, yeah, I'm Ian. You know, when I call Max, um, when I call uh William Venzella I mean all those guys were just like you know yeah let's do this you know it's going to be fun so that was very easy because everybody was excited to come together and just you know experience playing with each other and just showcasing um their ability as a unit and I think it's going to be incredible um hey we, so we asked Nick before you joined if uh and you don't need to definitely don't give any names out. Um, but basically uh, a number of players that you asked that were either weren't able to make it or, um, or declined, you know, for whatever reason, COVID reasons, personal or anything, was it, was it a lot more than you thought? Or was it, uh, cause I know Nick, you said there was probably 10 additional players that you could have asked that just couldn't, or you did ask and they just couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm I mean, wanting I the same thing for the East. Yeah, what I was explaining, Leo, is that obviously when we made our calls, um, you know, we were calling a larger group that what, than what actually accepted and that not everybody was available to make this right. trip, whatever reason, organizational reasons, personal reasons, right. health reasons. So uh, I guess that's the context in which we discussed it. Correct. No, I think for me, um, it was just a few guys. I think we have only two guys in New York that um, because of, uh, what they have going on in the off season that they couldn't commit because when they get back to New York after the event, they would have had to quarantine for 14 days and it would have put their, their, their other activity at risk. But there were not that many people. I mean, those were the only two that I could think of that um, couldn't make it because of COVID, you know. But mm -hmm. um, but we still have two guys coming from 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 those teams which is uh, Utica and Rochester. So it, it was easy to to get guys to say, hey, you know what, I'm okay, my schedule works. Um, but it, it was it was fun. It, like I say, it wasn't hard so, at all. So I have a question for the two of you. So have there been any bets made about the game? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, listen, I've only got about three minutes to go. So uh, I will tell oh, you that – I will, <laughs> I will tell you that um, – you know, I, I'm super confident in my team because I picked it and I know Leo's very confident in his. And I think that, you know, uh, if you listen to the podcast, somebody provided the corny answer that the fans are the winners of the ultimate winners of this event, right? I think they asked Lane, like, who wins in the East and the West? Oh, the fans win. And yeah. it's corny, but honestly, I think that whatever happens, uh, it's going to be a spectacle. You put that many good soccer players on the field uh, and, and, and someone's going to, it's going to go one way or another, but it's going to go, it's going to be a spectacle. Um, Craig Charles said it perfectly where he said there's going to be a lot of love before the game and after the game and probably during the game there's not going to be a whole lot of love going on mm -hmm. because it's about, you know 30 competitive men who want to go win and, and I know Leo's personality and obviously mine too is 
I'm not going to show up on a soccer field and embarrass myself or lose. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to win. And I think everybody that we've amassed is the same way. So um, let, why don't we put a corn dog on it? Adam, does that make you happy? Absolutely. There we go. We got it. I was well, just going to say, I was just gonna say that sounds like a really good political answer, but what's the real what's the real bet? <laughs> Listen, I tell you what, I'm not going to show up to my home arena in front of my fans and 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 settle for anything other than a win. So it's going to be a battle. And and I'm telling you, for me, I can I can tell you I'm preparing like it's going to be a regular season game. So I look forward to it. I look forward to playing against Nick and Craig and most especially Danny Waltman. Because um, oh yeah, I, I know if 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 it goes the other way, I'm going to be in big problem with Danny. He's going to keep texting me for the rest of the season. So um, I'm preparing for it. I think it's going to be fun. I think I think one of the coolest things about this game, by the way, is that neither team is going to have an opportunity to train or really get on the field and go through the paces of like what it's going to look like. So both of us, both Leo and myself. We're going to be working with players, trying to get them to play a collective style, uh, you know, with very minimal upfront ability to get on the field and, and, and experiment and, and go through the paces. So uh, the first quarter might be a little shaky, but I think by quarters two and three with the level of players we're talking about, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. How long you were going to have to train with each team? Uh, let's see. We fly in and we're going to go to sleep and we're going to wake up and play soccer. So, <laughs> so the first quarter is pretty much going to be one-on-one -on -one, and then quarter two and three is a team effort. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think that, uh, you know, we're talking about the elite, the elite tip top, you know? Right. So, uh, you know, Leo has been around the game long enough and he's played at the highest level of this game for so many years that if I say, if whoever's coaching Leo's team says, Leo, we're going to play man to man. We're going to play zone. We're going to drop the half. We're going to go behind the yellow. We're going to go weak side press. We're going to go strong, whatever he's going to, it'll take him all of three minutes to figure that out. So these are the tip top players. If they can't figure this stuff out on the fly, then, then maybe next year they shouldn't be getting the call for the all-star game. But <laughs> um, I think that no. I, I think that that's the truth of it. You know, we're talking about the elite of, of the group. That is true, Nick. I think, for me, I think it's going to take us five minutes for us to adapt to playing with each other, and 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 having played for a couple of months. But it won't take it won't take too long because I mean these are smart um, guys that are technically smart and uh, and tactically just as incredible. So I think we will be fine. It probably take us five minutes, maybe one or two shift, and we will be able to adapt to playing with each other. I mean, having played against. And, and having seen each other play for such a long time, I mean, I think I know the in, in and out of Ian's and, and know that I just need to get the ball far pull. Somehow Ian will get it in and, yeah. and <laughs> try to just make sure Max is isolated and, and put myself in a position where he can just find me. I mean, I think it's going to be fun and it's going to be easy for us to adapt to to playing with each other. But uh, But yeah, we were supposed to practice, but just because of the times that we are in right now, we had to shut it. Uh, down so we don't risk having too many people around and and and, and so we, we 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 would just come in and and show up the next day and play you know so it'll be like a normal regular season back-to-back -back home trip <laughs> home game trip yeah we're we oh. actually after the game we actually after the game uh are going to st louis for the next night for back to back yeah. so um we have to go play Everton in the St. Louis ambush the next night with the Tacoma Stars, which is going to be awesome as well because, you know, I'm bringing out an additional 10 players, um, of which I believe six who have never played for the Tacoma Stars before. Oh, cool. So uh, it's a perfect opportunity for me um, to play some players, as I'm sure Coach Leo is going to be thinking about for the Central Cup in some of his games, giving players that have never maybe represented the organization yet an opportunity to put on the shirt and to, to see what they can do and see if we can add. I've been, I've been saying it now for a while. I, and I do, I really have to leave now, but I do, I've been saying it for a while now that, that um, our league should evaluate further months or a longer preseason exhibition period. So we can really give players a tune up for the season. We can try out new rules. There will be some new rules that we'll be trying out in San, in St. Louis to, 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 to see if they work uh, moving into into the season um, and I think it's important for young players especially to get a chance to play the game because 
for me in my practices, I've got a lot of players that are really good in practice. They're very close to the level, really, really close. But guess what? When that whistle blows on an MASL game, it's really different. Um, there's so many psychological components that, that go into the game that you don't experience in that practice that um, they need games. So I'm really excited to give five or six guys a debut in an exhibition match uh, when guys the night before who have played in the All-Star will be tired. I think it's a great opportunity for some young players to go really throw something out there and see if they can make a name for themselves. Um, well, Leo, so uh, Brad Cosley asked, he said, let's hope it's not an NFL Pro Bowl game. I hope everyone plays hard. Um, I think I know what your answers are going to already be based on what you've already said, but can you kind of address that comment? Um, how you think you're going to play and how you think the team's going to play? Oh, no, I think we are going to play hard. I think I think it's going to be different from the NFL Pro Bowl game, the NBA game, I think. I mean, for soccer, it's completely different, right? There's no way you can go out there um, having played for so many years and somehow suppress that competitive nature and 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 put away your pride and your dignity of just doing your best every single chance you get to play this game. So for me and for the players that I think um, that are so good, nobody's going to just say, hey, I'm on vacation. No, I think once that wizard goes, I think everybody's going to take it to a whole different level because everybody, that's just who we are. And, and that's how we have fun playing for us. I mean, for me, and I'm speaking in general because I think the guys that I'm playing with, we share similar mentality and and and, and characteristics when it comes to the game. I think we just – we take it seriously. It doesn't matter if it's practice, all-star, or – I mean, that's what we do, you know. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, it's going to be different. I think it's going to – and, again, it's the first all-star game in 20 years. I yeah. think – we are going to set a tune so people can know that it's not just a show, you know, it's, it's, it's an actual game of guys who are just at, at the highest level of, of the elite. So it's going to be, it's going to be really competitive, you know? So, and I know, I know a lot of the guys have probably played outdoor or, or other indoor leagues or things like that on the, but nobody's played an MASL level game since March. So I think that's going to, to me, I would think that people are just going to kind of go crazy on that. Correct. Correct. And, and and that's what I got from a lot of the guys, the excitement to to have this opportunity to get back on the field. And keep in mind, a lot of these guys are playing for their national futsal teams, too, right. that are preparing for their, their qualifications. So these guys have been doing things with their national teams and for some of us, we've been privileged to have the opportunity to be kicking around and, and, and be working out because it's our life, it's our job, you know. So we are going to, I think all of us are going to come in. in for me and my Kansas City guys, we are, we are looking forward to it. We've been working out. And I think um, when I spoke to Dominic and Elton, I mean, those guys from Harrisburg did themselves seem professional, you know. I think William is always coaching, so he's active. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, almost everybody that I spoke to seemed like they've, they've been trying to stay stay in shape. So it's not like they're going to come and be sore after the first quarter. I think it's going to be it's going to be fun for everybody, and they're going to do their best. Cool, now, Leo. I, so I asked Nick about how he personally feels about this. You know, this is the first, like you said, the first MASL All Star game. You you you're taking a leadership role as the whole East. How do you feel about going into it and spearheading it? I feel honored. I feel uh, very, very blessed and fortunate. Um, it's an all-star event. Um, the hardest thing was just dialing people numbers. Um, like I said, I didn't have to convince anybody. Everybody was excited. Everybody wanted to come and, and, and do this thing to put the league back um alive you know just so people can kind of experience something having sh cut this season short uh, for me i don't think i have to do much i think i'm going to be ha i have doug miller there um 
I mean, all these guys are all professional and they are all doing great with their respective teams and they're all doing great in the league. I, I think we will have, everybody will have their responsibilities and I think everybody's going to do it to, to the best of their ability, you know. Um, there is not much I think I'm going to have to do other than saying, hey, you know what, since we have this player, he's good with his left foot, put Dominic Francis over here for a left foot set piece. That's that's easy. That's easy to figure out, you know. Um, well, and Venzella and I would talk before the game, the day before the game, and figure out, hey, you know what? We have three goalkeepers. You have two quarters. The other two goes to those two goalkeepers. Which one you want? I think it's, it's going to be easy. So it, for me, it's an honor, and it's, it's not stressful. I'm not worried about it. I just look forward to going out there and being an example for, you know, everybody to, to follow. I think everybody's going to do great. Now, now, changing from the All Star Game, though we love the All Star Game, the 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 Central Cup. Yeah. Are are you guys going to use kind of like the same tactic uh, Nick was talking about, like trying some of the younger guys, or how are you guys heading into the Central Cup with the mentality and as far as you as a coach and as the organization? Yeah, I think we're going to give uh, a lot of guys that we that I'm looking at. We're going to give them a chance. Um, to kind of really show their full potential in that competition. But, uh, but for the most part, we should have almost all of our guys on hands for it. You know, it, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to prepare, but yeah, we do have quite a few guys that we are highly considering that will be, um, featuring in that cup, in that tournament. Awesome. Now what it would, what would it mean to win it? It'll be, it'll, it, it, oh my goodness, it'll mean a lot. You know, it, it, it's been a while since we've won something here uh, with the Comets. It, it'll mean a lot and it will just show how much we have, we have prepared and, and, and how ready we are going into the season. You know, um, mm -hmm. those are, those are good teams. St. Louis is, is, is incredible right now, now that they've added quite a few players. So yeah, it will mean a lot to win it. I think it will, it will help our confidence. It will, the fans will, will love it. They will appreciate it because it's it's been a while. Would you guys be open to doing it as like a preseason going forward and kind of making it like a community thing where it's like, hey, this is what we do here in the central area or region? I hope so. Like I, hope so. I, hope, I hope it's, it's, it's successful so that way the owners – and the fans and the players can continue to do it. You know, I think it's going to be, it depends on how successful this is, you know, but I think it'll be something good if we could just continue. Same with the all-star game. I hope this is successful in a way where next year players can, can perform with the expectation of like, Hey, you know, what? if I do well, I might get invited, you know, so every player can look forward to it. And every team in, in, in our region can look forward to that tournament, too. So, yeah, I think it, it all depending on how successful it's going to be for the owners. I hope it is. Both. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I'm Thank looking you. forward to I'm looking forward to all of it. So, yeah. uh, Eric uh, Bergerud wants me to ask you about the Lucas Sousa guy. As, he says, ask him about that Lucas Sousa guy. Sosa. Oh, the young guy? Yeah. Sosa? So did he play last year? <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. I mean, that's our secret weapon. I cannot tell you about him. What do you want me to tell you? He's going to be what the next the next late or I mean, um, yeah, we're excited to have him. He didn't play last year. He was in the same situation as Ramon Palmer um, because of their visa situation. It took forever for that to get approved. And it finally did right after the season. So we are very excited to have uh, Lucas and Ramon joining us. It's just going to help us a lot. It's going to raise our level. Um, it will be Lucas's first year. He uh, Right now, the way he's working, he, he looks like he's hungry. So hopefully he can show, he can showcase his full potential, but um but yeah, it would be nice to have both of those guys back. Will he be one of the players we could see in the Central Cup? 
absolutely he will participate he will be playing because you know um having played last year he needs to he needs to get his uh his game speed going and that'll be a great place for him to to prepare before the season starts so yeah you will see him so so Leo, i have a question for you so you've you've been in the league for for quite a while and played with some amazing players so my, my question to you is, and this is all-star related, if you could bring back one of your old teammates Ooh. for the all-star game, who would it be? Oh, man. Uh, um, I mean, you've got, you've got a lot to choose from. Yeah. I do. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> you know what? I think that, yeah, that's a tough question. Maybe if, as a target, I'll bring Nettle. Oh wow! Okay. As a, as a, I mean, I learned a lot from that guy when I played with him in Philadelphia. Um, his ability, I mean, he was incredible. You know, um, as a defender, um, Pat Morris. Uh, Drew Callahan. I mean, those were incredible guys, too, that I learned so much from while playing with them. And right. um, um, those two guys, I mean, they play until they, both of them were like, I don't know, in their 40s. And they were still like at the top of the league defensively. Uh, midfield. Now I'm just telling you, it's hard. I, I couldn't pick one, right? Because it's just they're they have been incredible players in the midfield. Rick Adenio, um, he's one of the best midfielders I've played with. Um, Vahi Asapor, waiting for that name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, we 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 had a great uh, success together. Um, who else? Um, I mean, yeah, I think, right, I mean, there are so many guys. I, I can only give you those five for now, but. <laughs> That's a team right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. If I could do an all-star team and, and just watch from the stands, those are the five I would like to see play against another five. Nice. That's a good lineup, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eileen said, uh, Vahid and Brian Harris, and those are the two I was thinking of. Those are the two. That's names. another person I forgot. I will, Harris reminds me of of uh, of both of those guys, uh, 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 Pat Mars and Drew Kellingham. I mean, they they had the, the exact same um, style of play. I mean, they put their bodies on the line. They they were workaholics. They they always put their teams first. Um, yeah, so you're right. Brian Harris is another good uh, teammate I would love to have back. I still have nightmares of his three-point shots from <laughs> impossible <laughs> angles. And, <laughs> and yours, too. Yeah. I mean, you, don't get me wrong here. The, there's so many angles that I've seen you shoot from that, like, you have your back to the goal, and all of a sudden the ball is in the upper 90. It's like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that, but I understand what you're saying about Harris. The thing about him, he was this crazy defender that nobody expected. And somehow, when we needed some kind of a goal, he would come running from, from the defense. Either the ball would end up in his path, or he would outrun everybody with it and somehow get a shot up and it ends up in the most incredible spot in the goal. And we just like, and we, even his teammates are like, what? You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he he did help us a lot, and um, but it was all because of his work ethic. He was he was great. What usually happened with Brian Harris is he would block the original shot. Yeah, that would trigger the 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 um, breakaway. Yeah, and then somehow wind up being in the play again. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Yep, yeah, that was Harry. That's crazy. Everybody get up. Everybody get down. Everybody dance. Everybody dance to the rhythm tonight. Everybody get up. Everybody get up.